Every day, more than 10,000 tons of coke are burned inside a steel plant. It is the constant rhythm of heavy industry, where the fire never goes out and molten steel keeps flowing, day and night. From deep coal mines, millions of tons of raw material are extracted, crushed, and fed into massive furnaces. Inside, coal transforms, becoming purer and far more powerful than before. The result is a fuel that keeps blast furnaces running and allows iron and steel to be produced around the clock. Join the factor in to discover how coke is made, the silent fuel that keeps the world of steel alive. Coke is the backbone of the modern metal industry. Inside large factories, it is not only a fuel, but also a material that separates oxygen from ore, turning raw iron into metal. Because of this role, coke production creates millions of jobs around the world and generates enormous revenue for industrial economies. In the United States alone, the steel industry, with coke as an essential link, contributes nearly $520 billion every year and supports about 2 million workers. But the cost of that growth is far from small. Burning coke in blast furnaces is the single largest source of emissions in steelmaking, accounting for between 65 and 80% of all carbon dioxide released during production. It drives economic growth, but also poses a serious challenge to the environment. Without mentioning its impact, what material do you think could ever replace coke in the future? The journey of coke begins deep underground, where layers of ancient vegetation buried for millions of years have transformed into coal. In open pit mining, colossal machinery operates in sequence. Bulldozers and excavators widen the pit while removing layer after layer of overburden to gradually reveal the black coal seams below. Drilling rigs taller than two-story buildings bore hundreds of deep holes, each one carefully filled with info explosives measured down to the last pound. The controlled blast fractures the hard rock into massive chunks, clearing the way for giant bucket excavators to load coal onto haul trucks capable of carrying more than 400 tons each. A single large mine can process over 100,000 tons of coal per day, with the entire system running almost continuously. Fleets of trucks move one after another along dusty roads, carrying the dark flow of carbon toward washing and sorting facilities. Underground mining unfolds in an entirely different world, thousands of feet below the surface. The tunnels are carved out by drilling or continuous cutting machines, and heavy steel supports are installed to stabilize the roof and prevent collapses. Powerful ventilation fans and pressure sensors maintain airflow, keeping temperatures below 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Along these tunnels, mobile conveyors and shuttle cars transport coal non-stop out of the depths. In modern mines, remotely operated robots now replace human workers in narrow seams, dramatically reducing risk. Whether on the surface or far beneath it, every step serves the same purpose, to free the ancient carbon locked within stone and bring it back to the light. Each year, more than 8 billion tons of coal are mined across the globe, with nearly 1 billion tons devoted exclusively to coke production, the very foundation of the world's steel industry. Once the coal is brought out of the ground, it is not sent straight to the coke ovens. Instead, it is transported to processing plants by fleets of massive haul trucks. Each truck can carry hundreds of tons of coal and moves continuously between the mine and the nearby industrial complex. At the receiving area, the loaded trucks dump the coal into large hoppers. The material then passes through a primary crusher, where oversized chunks are broken down by rotating steel shafts. The purpose of this step is not to pulverize the coal, but to make the pieces uniform in size so they can be handled more efficiently and burn evenly inside the oven. After crushing, most of the coal remains in lump form, with an average diameter of 1 to 3 inches ideal for carbonization. Next, the coal passes through a multi-deck vibrating screen system. Each deck has mesh openings of different sizes that separate the particles by grade. Oversized pieces are returned to the crusher, while fine particles are removed or blended in small amounts. 
The fraction that meets the required size and moisture standards is sent to the mixing section. In this stage, coal from different sources is combined according to precisely calculated ratios. Each type of coal contributes distinct characteristics, some with higher adhesion, others with faster burning rates, and some with lower impurity content. The exact blend determines how well the coal will fuse during heating and how strong the final coke will be. Once the blended coal mixture is perfected, its journey moves deeper into the heart of the coke plant, where massive furnace chambers operate non-stop around the clock. Each batch of coal is loaded onto conveyors that carry it through enclosed pipelines toward charging hoppers positioned above the ovens. At the top, the feed gates open in sequence, releasing tons of coal into narrow chambers that stretch more than 40 feet long and nearly 20 feet high. When the oven doors close, the interior becomes a sealed world of its own. The walls are built from thick layers of refractory brick, surrounded by a network of gas heating pipes that radiate heat from the outside. Inside, temperatures can reach nearly 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, intense enough to completely alter the coal's internal structure. The charging process must be perfectly synchronized to ensure that every chamber is evenly filled, leaving no air gaps that could cause unwanted combustion. Once a new batch is fully loaded, the heavy steel doors lower into place, locking in a world of transformation where raw, unrefined coal begins its first stage of metamorphosis into solid, powerful coke. Once all the oven chambers are fully charged, the dry carbonization phase begins, the very heart of the entire coking process. For nearly 20 continuous hours, the coal is heated to around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit in a completely sealed environment with no oxygen present. Inside the refractory brick walls, a complex series of reactions takes place. The coal softens, fuses together, and gradually releases moisture along with volatile compounds. What remains is a porous and rigid carbon framework, the substance known as coke. Each coke oven battery can contain anywhere from 40 to more than 100 chambers operating simultaneously, and every coking cycle lasts between 16 and 20 hours. As soon as one chamber completes its run, the next is immediately charged with fresh coal, keeping the entire system functioning like a massive machine that never rests. During this period, the coal does not burn in the usual way. Instead, it bakes slowly as heat transfers through the oven walls. At peak temperature, the coal expands in volume, forming thousands of tiny voids within, a structure that makes coke both lightweight and remarkably heat-resistant. Each chamber runs as an independent cycle, yet all of them operate as part of a tightly synchronized network in which every hour is precisely calculated. After nearly a full day of carbonization, the once solid black coal has completely transformed into a material capable of withstanding the immense heat of blast furnaces the foundation on which the steel-making process will soon begin. When the carbonization process is complete, the oven doors open all at once, revealing glowing red coke blocks blazing in the darkness. On the opposite side, the pusher machine begins its slow, powerful movement. Its long steel ram, stretching dozens of feet, advances with immense force yet precise control, pushing the entire mass of hot material out of the narrow chamber with an accuracy of less than half an inch. Automated control systems monitor the operation continuously through heat sensors and infrared cameras, ensuring that the refractory walls do not crack or suffer thermal shock, because even the smallest fault could disrupt the entire production line. As the coke is discharged, the receiving area bursts into a blinding orange-red glow. Each load is immediately transferred to the cooling tower where rapid quenching begins. In the wet quenching method, thousands of nozzles release torrents of water at once, creating enormous white plumes of steam that rise dozens of feet into the air, filling the plant with a thunderous roar that makes the ground tremble. Modern facilities, however, favor dry quenching systems in which inert gas circulates through the hot coke to absorb heat. This captured energy is reused to generate electricity or dry fuel, cutting energy consumption and emissions dramatically. Once the temperature drops to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 
The coke is moved to the coke wharf, a wide storage yard where the black, metallic-looking blocks are dumped into shimmering piles, glistening under rising steam. There the coke continues to cool naturally and release its remaining moisture before being sent by conveyor to the screening section. Once the coke blocks have completely cooled, they are transported directly to the screening section, the final stage before becoming a finished product. Here, the porous black chunks are poured onto massive, vibrating conveyors. The entire system operates continuously, shaking in steady rhythm to separate the coke into different size categories. Large pieces, measuring between 1 and 3 inches thick, are reserved for blast furnaces in iron making. Smaller grades are used in metal casting in the chemical industry, while the fine dust is collected, compressed into briquettes, or reused as a secondary fuel source. After the screening stage is complete, each batch of coke is sampled and sent to the on-site laboratory for quality testing. In this facility, technicians grind portions of the sample into fine powder to analyze its chemical composition, determining levels of fixed carbon, ash, and sulfur. Solid samples are preserved for mechanical testing, where they are placed in rotating drums to measure strength and impact resistance. The data collected from these tests reveal the coke's porosity, durability, and combustion performance, three critical indicators that define how it will behave inside a blast furnace. Batches that fail to meet specifications are either rejected or recycled, while those that pass inspection are transferred to an adjacent storage area. There, automated conveyors load them into sealed steel silos designed to protect against moisture. From this point, the coke continues its journey, moving by conveyor belt or rail car toward the blast furnaces, ready to serve as the essential fuel and our structural backbone of the steelmaking process. Only when this entire process is complete do those solid blocks of coke finally begin their true purpose, inside the towering blast furnaces where steel is born. When the iron ore has been sintered or pelletized and the freshly produced coke still glows red hot, both materials converge at the top of the blast furnace, the core of the iron making process. Inside this massive structure, layers of iron ore, coke, and limestone are loaded alternately and met by a powerful stream of hot air rising from the bottom. Temperatures exceeding 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit ignite the coke in an intense reaction producing carbon monoxide that acts as a reducing agent, transforming the ore into molten iron that flows to the base of the furnace. Yet this transformation comes with a heavy cost. Enormous volumes of exhaust gases, carbon dioxide, fine particulates, and other harmful compounds escape through the furnace's mouth, making the very heart of the steel industry one of the largest sources of industrial emissions on Earth. As the stream of molten iron pours from the blast furnace, it is immediately transferred to the basic oxygen furnace, a massive steel vessel lined with refractory brick, where the crucial refining process takes place. From above, a long oxygen lance descends, blasting a powerful jet of pure oxygen at extremely high velocity onto the surface of the glowing metal. Under this intense reaction, the oxygen combines with carbon and impurities, creating thunderous roars, bursts of flame, and clouds of white smoke that rise high into the air. With every passing second, the impurities are burned away and the carbon content drops to its ideal level, transforming the brittle, impure pig iron into strong, ductile, and lustrous steel. It is the moment of the metal's rebirth, when raw molten iron evolves into the foundational material that will shape bridges, machines, and the modern world itself. But steel cannot remain in its molten state forever. As soon as it leaves the basic oxygen furnace, it is directed to the continuous casting area, where the glowing metal flows into copper molds cooled by circulating water. Within seconds, the outer layer of steel begins to solidify, forming long billets, wide slabs, or heavy blooms, marking the first tangible shapes of finished steel. From this point, the real shaping process begins. The semi-solid pieces are reheated to a workable temperature and sent through massive rolling mills, 
where dozens of alloy steel rollers rotate in synchronized motion, squeezing and stretching the material under immense pressure. Thick slabs are transformed into thin sheets, blooms are curved into coils, and square billets are drawn out into construction bars. Every rotation and every press defines the future of each piece of metal, whether it will become a bridge frame, a ship's hull, a car body, or the beams of a skyscraper. The thunder of the rolling line echoes through the air, blending with waves of red heat, closing the symphony where raw metal is reborn into the foundation of the modern world. From the blazing furnaces to the thunder of the rolling mills, that journey has transformed coal, ore, and fire into steel, the very foundation of the modern world. Every steel beam in a bridge, every frame inside a factory, and every panel on a car you see today began with the same rigorous cycle of extraction, refining, casting, and shaping. It is more than an industrial process, it stands as proof of human ingenuity and endurance. If you found the making of steel fascinating, give this video a thumbs up, share in the comments which part impressed you the most, and subscribe to the channel for more journeys where ordinary materials are reborn through technology and human craftsmanship.